All right, we're here at the uh, NZXT booth, and uh, we are checking out your software here, Mitch. This is uh, Cam. Now, what does Cam do? Okay, so Cam is our uh, basic software. Well, Cam Basic uh, is our, our software suite. That's basically a hardware monitor. Um, and what we did is we kind of uh, set a, a setting, you know, to, to paint a picture of a, uh, you know. The, the CAM ecosystem. So the theme at Computex here is is really fleshing out CAM, um, and and we're doing that with three new products that we're we're introducing. Um, two of them are, are two new Krakens, uh, and then our Grid Plus uh, digital fan controller. Uh, now we're going to check out uh, the Krakens and everything in just a second. I want to ask: Is this software in beta, or is this already available to download? Okay, so this software is available to download at cam.nzxt.com, um, and and we it's not in beta. It's it's full release now, um, but we're actively patching it and working on um, you know new versions that that fix any kind of problems, uh, notably temp sensor. Um, you know, any kind of bugs with temp sensors. I think there's a couple people out there that are experiencing uh, 140 degree Celsius motherboard reading. So uh, we, we are looking to fix that and we're working very hard to get it done. That's in Celsius, right? Yeah, Celsius. Mm -hmm. All right, so take us on a tour of uh, what we have on the screen here. Okay, so on the left here, you'll have uh, your specs and you can kind of click down, drill down to a more advanced mode. Uh, and it gives you, you know, the, the current, the low, the high, and then a breakdown for cores. You have your voltages, GPU, uh, and then usually it would read fans here, but for some reason uh, it's not working. <laughs> um, but on most most uh, most uh, times it you know, works fine. Alrighty, and then uh, right here in the middle we have um, any kind of temp reading that we have. So we have the CPU. You can switch between um, Celsius, Fahrenheit, GPU, same thing. Uh, you have your load usage, CPU, RAM, network, hard drive, um, and then our notification system. So basically, this will go ahead and let you know if you are, uh, you know, hitting any any highs with your temps, GPU, CPU, um, and and what you can maybe do to fix it. Um, over here on the on the right here, we have uh, the history, so you can kind of click down and see what the the top usage with load, temp, uh, and the top app. Uh, we only have Cam running, so Cam's the top app. Uh, you can you know bring it by uh, hour, day, week, month, year. Um, so yeah, I mean. So it's pretty pretty straightforward, very friendly, very clean, uh, and easy to use. Uh, what about fan controls? Okay, so fan control. Uh, that was something that people were asking uh, about the H440. You know, it doesn't have a five and a quarter bay. Uh, so we were kind of, you know, we would been working on something, uh, and we thought the Computex would be the perfect time to unveil it. Uh, and that's going to be our Grid Plus digital fan controller. Uh, so uh, whenever you buy the Grid Plus. Um, you can use the CAM software ecosystem uh, to basically come on in and you'd download the driver, install the driver, and then you can activate the, uh, the module here. Once you confirm, then it brings it up right here. You can see each fan on each header. Um, it gives you the, the, the heat readout, or the temp readout for your uh, computer, and then your fan curves right here. Uh, it comes with silent and a performance mode by uh, default. You can kind of uh, pick these as you want. If you wanted to do something more custom, then you can break it down here um, and really, really get a, Get creative. Interesting. You want it to be very, very cold at 70, and then, uh, <laughs> and then not, not so cold at like 80, but at 100, you could definitely. Want so to this is the very uh, yeah, yeah. unrealistic <laughs> temp reader or a uh, uh, fan curve. Why would curve. you do this? Why? <laughs> Your computer's gonna be like, Woo. yeah, it'd be terrible. Uh, we also have you know total wattage readout, and this is something that was really cool. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they don't, they don't know how how much their uh, you know, fan wattage is, you know, people assume, you know, you see 30 watt, you know, per channel, stuff like that. Everybody says, well, you know, does my fan use five watts? Does he use half a watt? Uh, so, you know, it breaks it down uh, granularly right here on, on, each, on each header, and then it gives you the total readout. Now, can you control each fan independently? Unfortunately, with this uh, model, we can't um, because it doesn't have PWM control. Uh, for us to control each header independently, it would require a much more complicated PCB. So, um, it's something that that we would like to do eventually, um, and you know, maybe maybe we'll be working on it uh, in the near future. Now, did you guys get any inspiration from uh, the ASUS AI suite? So, whenever we were designing Cam Grid Plus, uh, you know, we took a lot a look at all of our competitors. So, if you look at you know AI Suite, Corsair Link, um, we kind of just went through those uh, and you know, try to figure out any pain points. Um, the biggest one was you know some of them are harder to use. They're you know a little more enthusiast based. So, I mean that was kind of the the inspiration that we drew on um, was was to well not really inspiration, but you know we tried to to make things better. Um, to really one-up them uh, in terms of, of usage and, and ease of use. All right, here is the uh, the Grid Plus. So uh, what are we looking at here? Okay, so this is the Grid Plus unit. So um, right here on the side, you'll see three headers uh, for the three-pin fan. Uh, they're not quite wide enough to fit a PWM fan connector, but we're looking to widen that with the second revision uh, and a rolling change. 
Um, so, I mean, this, this is a pretty sleek design. Uh, it's really thin, so you can fit this behind a, a motherboard tray. Um, on the H440, even though there's the foam there and you have cables, you should still be able to fit this behind um, and route all your cables behind and, and make it look really clean. Uh, what are the mounting options for the grid to the inside of the case? Okay, so because it's so thin, um, you can really fit it anywhere. Um, it comes with some dual lock, uh, which, you know, it's, it's the mounting option that we've kind of uh, embraced because it's like Velcro, but it's a lot more dur durable. You can, you can put it on the back of stuff and it, it holds, um, you know, I think up to 10 pounds or something ridiculous like that. So, I mean, um, you can just slap it on the back. You can put it behind the side panel on the front, on the bottom. Um, if you really need to put it in a tight spot, you could actually take the casing off um, and just have the bare PCB um, to mount. All right, Doug, what about the uh, power? How's, 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 how's it powered here? Turn it so, around so we can see. We got a, uh, a four pin Molex, it goes DC to I think four pin Molex um, connector, and then you have the, uh, the, yeah, the USB that plugs directly into the motherboard header. Now you mentioned that you also have um, a USB internal hub, right? Now that yes. might be nice for this if someone has only one header or whatever, or just a couple headers and they're using one for the front panel. So uh, how long have you guys been making that? I haven't even seen that. I think we've been making it for about uh, two years now, one year, two years. Yeah, where have I been living? <laughs> so yeah, it's called the, uh, the IU01. Uh, and you can find it on our store. I think Newegg sells it, NCIX. Uh, it's pretty cheap. Um, I think uh, just over 10 bucks. I mean, uh, if you need to expand your, your USBs, you're know, using Crack and using the grid, um, obviously you might run out of USBs if you want to use the, the front panel USB headers as well. Um, and it's a, it's a really easy solution to that. Awesome. We have some new Krakens, X61 and the X41. So um, which one do you want to start with? And uh, tell us what's different. All right, so we can go ahead and start off with the uh, X41. So the X41, um, we basically, completely gutted the X40 platform. The only thing that is the same with the X40 and the X41 is the tubing. Um, so between the X40, X41 and the X61, this is the first consumer close-up cooler with a variable speed pump. Um, so basically that's gonna mean that, you know, when you're surfing, the pump's gonna, gonna wind down, it's not gonna be as loud. Uh, and when you're gaming, then you're not gonna sacrifice any top end power. Uh, and this pump is actually more powerful than our previous pump. Um, I think it goes all the way up to 3,000 RPM. So um, in addition to the variable speed, you're going to get more power out of the pump um, without sacrificing anything. Nice. And what kind of a... Same, same on the bottom. Copper, right? Yes. Copper, cold plate. Yep. There we go. Let me turn around so we can see that on the camera. There we go. Shiny, beautiful copper. So the X41, uh, we actually completely got rid of the X40 radiator. This is a custom radiator. We've uh, increased the, the, the depth by 24%. So it's 24% deeper than the X40. And we've added a couple channels to the radiator as well. So it's denser. Uh, you're going to get a lot more performance out of this radiator than the X40. Uh, when we were designing the, the X41, it's designed to beat any 120 millimeter uh, close-up cooler, whether it comes stock with one or two fans. Um, this will beat it, hands down, every time. Now, what static pressure fan do you guys have on there? Uh, we have our FX V2, so you can kind of turn it around here. Uh, this is our new iteration of uh, high pressure fan. So previously we had our FX 140. So this is the FX 14 or FX V2 140, um, and we've actually switched manufacturers. So previously, uh, when the fan spun up um, really, really fast, uh, we had some problems with the, the blades breaking. So we've made the blades denser; they won't break. Um, the fan is quieter, it uses a completely different bearing, so it uses a nano bearing uh, as opposed to like a sleeve bearing. Sounds fancy, I don't know, what, what does that mean? Um, I'm not sure, you have to talk to one of our product guys, but <laughs> you know, it's, I, all I know is it, it keeps it extremely quiet, um, and it doesn't, you know, make that whirring noise, uh, kind of like the, the, the R9290 or anything. Yeah, that's whirrable. <laughs> so, um, that joke is whirrable. it's quieter, it's faster, um, and it's more durable. Uh, so basically this fan takes Every, every problem that you had previously with the FX140 um, and, and completely fixes it. Um, uh, speaking of problems, um, it is thicker. Um, so do you have any compatibility issues with any of your current cases? With our current cases, no. All of our cases are, uh, you know, we, we have full compatibility for the X41, X61, um, with maybe the exception of some of our older cases. Um, since we uh, started developing the 630, 530 chassis, well, we've always had um, really thick rads and 140 platforms um, in mind, you know, when we're designing it. I'll go ahead and read the dimensions, just in case someone out there wants to know, and they've got a, a you know, a different brand case. It's a uh, 140 by uh, 172.5 by 36 millimeters. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's take a look at the X61. Are we ready yet for that? Yes, we. Six-year warranty. That, 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 that's yeah. Pretty... I was gonna, I was gonna use that to wrap up. Oh man, I, well, I just saw it on there. It's like, <laughs> I got excited, you know. I'm like, so, dog. 
With the X61, uh, we have the same variable speed pump, the same uh, FXV2 fans, uh, same tubing, and then our battle-tested X60 radiator. So uh, we were thinking about uh, increasing the, the depth of the radiator, but ultimately the trade-off between compatibility just wasn't worth it to us. Uh, right now the X60 is one of the leaders right now in performance, so I mean, the added pump uh, power, the added fan power and, and quietness um, really, really uh, lets the X61 step into, into a, a league of its own. Um, both of them have full cam support, uh, and they're both covered by a six-year warranty, an industry-leading six-year warranty. Yeah, and I think the other one's like five years and, and two months is the most best I've seen. It's our competitor, <laughs> five years and two months. I'm making this up, but it's pr probably true there. Right? No, I think it's five years. I don't know about the two months. <laughs> I, it's, uh, I made it up. Okay, so you've installed your Kraken. Uh, now let's look at the software. Okay, so one of the big pain points for um, the Kraken X40 and X60 was the software. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't developed by us directly. Um, it was developed by the manufacturer. So whenever we needed to make a change, it was it was very painful for us, um, and obviously painful for the end user. If you, you know you guys are getting crashes, you can't install it. Um, so it was this whole runaround to to get it fixed. So what we've done is we've gotten lower level access to their firmware uh, and been able to completely write our own software. Um, so with Cam, uh, you did the same thing with the Grid Plus, uh, where you would have you know the Cam or the Kraken Plus module, um, and then you know you click Manage and 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 all that stuff. So. Whenever you have uh, your Kraken installed in the system, uh, you'd be able to completely control it here with a custom um, fan profile. You see your temps, your liquid temp, uh, and you can control the fan speed with a slider as well. You have your hue uh, control right here, so you could do standard blinking, breathing rainbow. Um, and then if you wanted to really get down to the nitty gritty, you can adjust each RGB channel independently. Nice. Um, and then another cool thing is multi-Kraken support. So, I know previously everybody's been calling for this ever since we released the G10, and it's something that we've been really wanting to do, um, is, is support multi-Kraken. Previously with Kraken control, uh, the the uh, the Krakens were kind of chained together, so if you change the hue on one of them, it would change the hue on both. Uh, with this, now we can control them independently, so you can set the LED color, the fan curves. Uh, if you wanted a more aggressive fan profile for your GPU, um, you can definitely do that. Um, unfortunately, it's still tied to the CPU temp just because um, there's no uh, API key or, or firmware key for that. Um, so it's, it's not possible right now, but it's something that we would love to do and we're, we're kind of testing the waters with that. All right, man, I think it's pretty awesome. I think, I think this level of integra integration is kind of like the next level. Some people are afraid of software, but I think there's a group of people out there who want this kind of control. So it's really awesome to see uh, that you guys have made it available to everybody. So very good. Thanks a lot, Mitch. One more thing. But wait, there's more. I keep like So, you know, we, we, we announced that we were gonna have mobile support for Cam Basic. Um, and that's very true. We're going to be having uh, mobile support uh, for iOS, Android, and hopefully Windows Phone oh, cool. 8 um, for the Cam Basic. Um, and hopefully um, by July, we'll actually have uh, Kraken Plus control for mobile as well. So you'll be able to control your Kraken from your phone anywhere in the world over HTTP um, and your Good Plus. Now, will, you, will you be able to get like your notifications onto your phone? And, notifications and you on like, your turn, phone. You're like, ooh, it's hot. Let's turn up the... Exactly. Nice. Um, so, I mean, I know that, that the hardware community uh, doesn't really like miners too much, but, you know, yeah. for miners, it's a godsend. Um, for anybody that, that does any kind of, you know, folding, anything like that, right. uh, you can monitor your computer anywhere in the world. Um, and then we actually have the... Uh, the uh, Mobile platform is running on the iPad and the iPod Touch over on the side. We're going to go check that out. We have our Kraken software and our basic software running on the iPad right here. So you can actually see uh, all the control. You can click down and select the different colors. So you can actually do like pretty much everything on here. Exactly. You have complete control. Um, this is in beta right now, so we're kind of testing it internally and trying to get it ready. Uh, but we're hoping to have it prepped. Um, by July, which is, uh, I think end of June is when people should start being able to buy them uh, at Newegg, NCIX, um, and, and in Europe. Um, so shortly thereafter, we should have mobile support complete. Nice. Cool. I bet there's gonna be a lot of people sitting at their desk who just pick up their tablet and do that instead of actually touching the computer. I, I guarantee that's gonna happen. Well, exactly. Uh, the big reason that we wanted to do this uh, was, you know, we have a lot of people that have multiple screens, you know, they can have it running on the side screen. Uh, but for the people that have a single screen that want to be able to monitor their stuff while they game, uh, this is a really big help. Nice. Um, so, you know, you can have your phone set up and you can see all your temps, you can control your fans. Um, if, you know, you're hitting crashes or anything like that because stuff isn't, isn't you know, dialed in right, then you can definitely change that on the fly. Awesome. Now, the, uh, the software itself, is it only available for Windows right now? Is it available for, you know, Windows 7, 8 and it works with everything, but is it only available for Windows? 
So right now, uh, it should work on, I think, uh, Windows 7 and 8 for sure. Uh, previous versions of Windows shouldn't really have a problem running it as long as they're running the most up-to-date version of .NET Framework. Um, for Linux support and Mac OS X, uh, it's something we'd like to do, but it's not a priority right now. Uh, priority is Windows, and we need to really hammer that down before we uh, take a step forward and, and try to go into OS X and, uh, and, and Linux. And OS 2 warp, man. Hmm? OS 2 Warp, the old IBM operating system from, <laughs> from a thousand years ago. I still have a copy of that. Oh, wow. All right, man. Well, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Be sure to uh, say thanks to Corsair. That's our sponsor at Computex. They're the reason we're here. This is their Hydro Series HD10. It's a bracket, so you can mount pretty much any of their water cooling units right on your GPU, and they've got it for several different GPUs, and it works for the Intel and AMD. Be sure to check that out in our coverage.